what we'll start on. Let me look this. <coughs> um, but we're going to do increase and decrease in a little bit of composite stuff today. And I should have drawn this first. Uh, let me draw it now. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. I know I just pulled it out, but yeah, it's fine. I'm already drawing it. <laughs> this is quite a waste on my video right now. So, uh, Let's see. Let's do this. I'm giving you a piecewise here because you know we miss them. There we go, not too bad. Okay, so you need to, on this uh, function, this piecewise that I drew, determine where the graph is increasing or decreasing. Okay, determine where the graph is increasing or decreasing. Now, I need you to, to remember this, because this can get confusing, because you've been doing range and all that. But e increasing and decreasing is always along the x-axis along the x-axis. And usually increasing and decreasing is on an open interval, similar to continuity. Sometimes they'll say on an open interval. And what that means is like you keep everything open parentheses. If it doesn't say open interval, then you close the parentheses. So I'm, we're gonna do, I think we'll do close today just to get with it. But um, what you're doing is, this doesn't look like it's connected, but it is. Okay. so. You always follow a graph from left to right, like you read a book. You always follow a graph left to right. So if I'm coming from the left, leftmost part of my picture, is my pen going up or going down? Down. Okay. It's going down until where on the X? Until negative four. So I am decreasing from negative infinity all the way to negative four, and you can keep it open since there was open here. Once I jump my pen, what am I doing now? Increasing until where on the X? Six. Until where on the X? Zero. Zero, okay. So I'm gonna actually make this a bracket from negative four until zero on the, oops, not the bracket. X. And then what happens after that? What is my pen doing after that? Decreasing, Decreasing all, the, all the time, right? Yes. So, and you can just write this again. You could, could put it up here with a united symbol. It doesn't matter to me in that case. So where did I go from zero to positive infinity? Even though your pen is going down along the X axis, it's positive. So can you handle things like that? So they're gonna ask you, where's the function increasing? Where's the function decreasing? They actually might ask you more, by the way. I'm trying to remember this book. This is a new book, but it's really, it's pretty solid in its calculus. It's going to ask you domain again. It's going to ask you range again. It'll go into increasing. You need to, in your head, be able to switch back and forth. It can get frustrating. If I asked you, so let's just look at this real quick. What would be the domain of this? Why all reals? I thought there's a hole right here. But there's also a close at that X. Domain is along the X. And so this is getting as wide as it can. So you have to be able to switch like that in your brain from domain. Okay, here's the domain. Oh, where's it increasing? Okay, here it is. I mean, it's very, that's the one lovely complicated thing. All right, now let's talk about even odd functions. So here's the second thing. Even odd functions. So the definition for even, we'll start with that one, if f of x is equal to f of negative x, then f is even. Do you remember what it means to be even function? How about if I did this? What did that mean? It's symmetrical. Symmetric to what? 
the y-axis, yes. So if you are even, that would be a picture like this. Okay, that looks terrible, <laughs> as symmetrical as I wanted to be, but this would flip over onto this exactly. Okay, parabola, like your basic parabola is, is a um, even function, okay? If they give it to you as an equation, I mean, you could type it into your calculator, but do you remember this trick? That is an even function because of what? Don't add the exponents, but look at all the exponents. If all the exponents are even, 4 and 2, there is an exponent next to a number by itself, by the way. It's x to the 0, and 0 is even. If all of these exponents, all exponents are even, then it is an even. Okay, so you wouldn't even have to put this in your calculator. You could, um, but... That's how you remember. Even function flips over the y. I guess I should write that too. So then what would be unique about the odd function, if you remember? So if f of negative x equals negative f of x, then f is odd. Oh, that says the f is all then. All this is saying is if you plug an, an x in and get, or if you plug a negative x in and you get out the original equation, then you're even. If you plug a negative x in and get out the negative, then you're odd. But what does odd mean? So odd, this is what I, how I would try to remember it from last year, origin, origin, odd origin. Even, make it a Y. So origin symmetry would be your basic one is the discograph. Looks like this. If you put your pen or pencil at the origin, see if I can do it, and you flip it upside down, does it look exactly the same? It hasn't shifted anywhere, then it's origin. 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 Sorry, it's like saying that millions of times. Um, if you they give you an equation and they give you something like uh, 6x cubed plus 5x and all of the exponents are odd, every single one of them, and there is no number by itself. Remember, this has a 1. All the exponents are odd then you have origin symmetry. You don't even need to put that in your calculator. It's there. Some of them you will have to put in your calculator just to double check. You probably don't remember what they look like for now, but I mean, you can put it in your calculator and totally be fine. Okay. So that was something else we went over. Let's see if I have enough room for this. Yes, I do. I should be able to get this done actually. No, I can't. Okay. We are now going to be talking about functions and operations on functions. One, two, combining functions with operations. So if you are given, here's an example, f of x equals two x minus three, and g of x equals x squared minus 1. Find the following. Mm, let's say in the domain. Because I think they're going to make you find the domain of that too tonight. So it looks like this. It's really just remembering your notation. Here's A, here's B, F minus G. And here's D. So what am I asking you to do for A? Just add them, right? Okay. 
So f plus the g of x is just the f of x plus the g of x. Okay, you don't have to write that part, but that's all you have to do. So you just take your f of x function, which is 2x minus 3, and you add it to your g of x function, x squared minus 1. And then obviously clean it up and try to put it in an, a logical mathematical order, which means, you know, do your exponents first. So that's x squared uh, plus 2x minus 4. Anybody know what the domain of this is? What's the domain of an x squared? You should know that one. All, all, all reals. Infinity to negative infinity to infinity. Polynomials should be easy for you. Domain of polynomials is always all reals. Okay. F minus the G, same thing, right? Just minus this time. Just make sure you distribute. So you'd have 2x minus 3 minus x squared plus 1. You distribute that negative and change the signs of that one. And again, what would we be at? Negative x squared plus 2x minus 2. Domain, all reals. What's this one? C, what am I going to do here? Got a foil, yeah. X squared minus 1. Now, they might give you square roots with these. They might give you fractions with these. you got to know how to do all that now. You need to know how to multiply two fractions together. You need to know how, what to do if you had a square root here. If you had a square root here and you had to multiply it, just leave it. I mean, you could distribute it through. But if it, if it was like the square root of x squared minus 1, just leave it. Uh, but this one is easy to foil. This would be what? 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 2x plus 3. Again, that's easy domain. It's a polynomial. And then this last one, just stick one over the other, 2x minus 3 over x squared minus 1. If it can factor, factor it. If you can simplify it more, this one you can't. What's the domain on this one? We talked about this last class. This is a fraction. Fractions have problems where? In the denominator. Where am I restricted in my denominator? What values would make a 0 down here? 1 and negative 1. So when you go to write your domain, the back of the book will say, oh, x can't be 1 or negative 1. That's fine. You can write that. But the better way to write it is from negative infinity to negative 1, the lower bound, united with negative 1 to 1, united with 1 to infinity. That is the better way to write the domain because, oops, it's kind of out of there. Okay. After we do operations, what always comes next, kids? Do you remember? It's called composite functions. And I'm almost done. This is really my last thing. This, and then I want to draw some tables for you. Composite functions are fog. Remember fog? Oh, yes. Okay. Fog, or sometimes we write it the f of the g of x. What that means is your g goes into your f. Your entire g function goes into the f function everywhere you see an x. So let's just do quick examples of this. Um, given f of x equals x squared plus 1. And g of x equals 1 over x. Move this up for a second. I want you to find the Goff. Let's do Goff. I want you to find the fog. And then I want the Goff of 4. I'm going to show you how to do that one. So for A, the F goes into the G. The F entire function goes into the G everywhere you see an X. So this one's really easy. What would it be? 1 over X squared plus 1. Done. 
the fog would be the reverse of that. Would you agree? So this entire function, 1 over x, goes there where this is, has an x. So this would be 1 over x squared plus 1. And then you can clean that up for me. You know, you can square this. 1 squared is 1, x squared, so 1 over x squared plus 1. The back of the book might even make you make that a fraction. I mean, you can make that a fraction. We'll do that in a minute. What would the golf of 4 be? So what would I ask you to do here? Let's pretend you didn't find the golf, first of all. Here's what I would do. Put 4 into the F right now and get a number for me. What's 4 into the F function? 17. The F of 4 is 17. Now take 17 and do what with it? Put it into the G. The G of 17 is 1 over 17, and that is the answer. That's the golf of 4. You could have put you could have found the golf first and then put 4 right here. Wouldn't you get the same answer? And you're done. Okay? Now, one of the most important parts, and she puts this on the SPCC, and last year's kids, I was, I was surprised. They had a little bit of a tricky time getting it, but once they saw it, they were like, oh, I have to explain this to you, but this is, Calculus. Let me see if I can write this down. This is our last example. It's doing fog and golf with tables. Oh, let's see. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. And I'm going to write another table, by the way. If you just would give me a moment to copy this down, if I can see it. Of course I can't, but whatever. These are definitely not functions. No, no, they are. X's aren't repeating. My bad. Okay, and I only want to do two problems here, and we're done with this first lesson. See, not terrible. We're going to find the golf of three and the foff of one. The golf of three and the foff of one of, from these two tables. It's going to become very important. We're, we're going to do something called derivatives, and I'm going to give you a table where it's x, f of x, f of x prime, um, x prime. It's crazy, and you have to read it from that, and she puts it on a test in her SPCC course. So that's why I'm doing it. But I'm going to start you off baby right now and see if you can figure this out. So here's how I would do this. Remember, what are you plugging into what first? Are you looking at first? This is your X, right? This 3? Okay. So you're going to find the F of 3. What is the F of 3 based on this table right now? F of 3 is negative 2. Wouldn't you agree? Here's 3. That's my X. The F of 3 is negative 2. What do I do with that negative 2? We just did it in the previous example. You put that in. You go to the G function now. Uh, now I want the G of negative 2. The G. Here's the G. Here's the negative 2. The G of negative 2 would be what? That's your answer. That is the golf of 3. Figure out if you can find foth for me. Find the foth. Foth and golf. The foff of one. Do I have to go to the G one at all? No. So, let's see. I'm changing colors here. Find the F of one. Look at that yellow color. That's cool. The F of one. The F of X. X is one. The F of one is negative two. Do you all agree? What do I do now with that negative 2? Go back to this one on the x line and find negative 2. Find the f of negative 2. The answer would be 4. Did that make sense to you? Does that totally blow your mind? It's really cool. All right, so 
now you can start your work from home, the first part. Um, let me stop this. Yes, my love. Couldn't you do this 